Oh, hello. This is Dirty 20 Gaming. My name is Kevin, and we are back after a hiatus of sorts. Uh, these wonderful people have agreed to, to somebody. I can hear somebody's Zoom or somebody's Twitch. Uh, these wonderful people have agreed to, to Is it mine? That would be embarrassing. Oh, it is? That's really embarrassing. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, my own voice. Yeah, I thought I muted mine. Four seconds too late, but anyway. Uh, yes, these wonderful people have agreed to join me to play the game tonight, and that's amazing. So, let's talk to them quick before he swallows his coffee. Uh, <laughs> Bison underscore Stonefist. That's me. Um, I'm Bison. I'm mostly here, actually. That's kind of the only thing I do is I play games here. I'm here four nights a week. On Mondays, I play Jack. Uh, I got Ghosts in Me Aldridge. Um, he is our uh, ex-military operative from our Buffy the Vampire Slayer game, Grave New World. On Tuesdays, I play... I don't play, I run. The Cyberpunk Red game, Carnage Heights. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um, it's... Still going. On Thursdays, I play Encino, the Dragonborn Paladin Ranger, in our uh, 5e Fool's Gold campaign, King's Pyrite. Yeah, and you were so, you guys were all so sure you were going to be dead in that. You were making up backup characters. Well, we characters. were absolutely certain. I had, I had yeah. backup characters. I had memes to go with them. <laughs> the, the whole afterlife was planned. Uh, mm -hmm. What? Our other player with us this evening is the amazing, the wonderful, the talented, the skilled, the Kara Sophia. Hello. Well, Karis, anyway. Yes. <laughs> Hello. I'm here. And, and um, the best talk. place to reach out to me is in the Dirty 20 Discord. Uh, thank so. you for posting it. Uh, yep. And, and uh, you've been Minecrafting much lately? Uh, not very much. I've had some oh. health issues that have gotten in the way of just about everything. Oh, no worries. So I just want to make sure we... We uh, push yeah. all the bells. When Everybody... when I'm doing well, I'm I'm gaming and I'm streaming and I'm Minecrafting and all that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's kind of minimal at the moment. And when you're not, you're not. That's how this is supposed to be. This yep. is not real when life. Not, this is I game. Disappear off <laughs> yeah, the yes. ether, and nowhere yes. to be seen. Where are you? I am in a place called Ill. I will be back when I am better. <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much, you're back, so you're better. So let's do this. Everybody's all over the place in the timeline right now, but that's okay. Uh, Artemis is uh, going, is uh, <laughs> off to have a bound to be very frustrating conversation with two idealists. Uh, they're very difficult to talk to, the idealists in general, and these two in particular, because they're artistic by temperament. <laughs> so that's going to be great fun. Uh, but, but she's the best equipped to deal with that. She, so. Yep, because the also artistic and also... A bit temperamental uh, and, and prone to explosions of art as a form of, of protest, uh, <laughs> which is the ironic bit, but never mind. Shush. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, ahead of everybody at the moment uh, in the timeline uh, is uh, Felicity, uh, who is at her third party in three days, which sounds like me in the 80s. Um, <laughs> but this one, uh, they're organizing, so. Uh, when that happens, this is going to be a major social event. Uh, yeah, a major social event. Positive or negative remains to be seen, but it will be a major social event. She's already had to pretend to be 16 one night and then pretend to be like 18 or 21 the next night. Uh, and now it's her turn to, yeah, be an adult for the first time. But meanwhile, Sid's been mostly playing with trains, talking to drunks, and planning... The steam system that looks like plant life, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and so we're going to leave you doing that for a couple of minutes because the furthest back in the timeline is Allegra. Uh, Allegra is, is so far back, I forgot you had a last name, Allegra Melodia. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, I'm not sure she's ever said it out loud no, to anybody. But it's on, the, it's on the screen, so what the heck. It's um, on the overlay. Yeah. yeah. So you, um, as sort of humble and, and sort of, um, oh, what's the sort of folksy as, as uh, Allegra tends to be, uh, you were treated to uh, the 
the the gold hat experience, uh, the blue plate special. Yeah. Uh, you were trounced around town, showing off to the locals, uh, um, escorted by a uh, a handsome and uh, uh, constructively ch- uh, skilled uh, laborer in your on your trip. Uh, you found out there's a whole new business opportunity open to you, and the twelve folks that make up the haulers of the palanquin have never been happier than when they dropped you off at the mansion. They're puffing, they're panting, you can see the sweat coming through the nine layers of their fancy, fancy uniforms, but they've never been more pleased as they hop off into the darkness like some weird Monty Python sketch. (laughs) And you went, I believe, at that point... Up to bed, basically. I was exhausted. I made my way upstairs into the <laughs> residential area and went to sleep, yes. So, um, went to sleep. So we'll take it from there. Uh, in the morning when you wake up, there's a bowl of fresh fr- fruit. Uh, there's uh, flowers by the window. Like just, just a, uh, not like a bouquet, but just a vase full of flowers, of fresh picked flowers by the window. The curtains are opened, but not so much that the light would be in your face. Uh, staff is taking very good care of you. In fact, they may have polished your canes while you were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they didn't do it too much. I don't want those getting slippery. No, no, no that would be counterproductive. <laughs> but the, it's just they're not quite where they were. They either lifted them up and cleaned underneath them and put them back, or they may have cleaned them too. But somebody did that amazing silent clean thing in a room while you slept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what you wake up to. Uh, There's the the breakfast, uh, the earthenware pot. It's still got some tea that's warm-ish. It's still got some heat to it. Uh, Plus, you know, it's it's Italy in this late summer, so it's a plate of fruit and and whatnot uh, for your breakfast. Lovely. So, I spent the night with my brain churning away and processing all that I saw yesterday, Um, you know, understanding, having listened to, um, okay, who was I listening to? Terrence? Terrence. 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 Listening to to Terrence, who was the farmer that we had picked up on our way into town, Mm -hmm. and, and sort of understanding what the Palin Queers? The sure, yeah I, like I, that, yeah. I don't know how to what to call the people. I don't from, know, but I can see I can see guys are looking it up that, as we speak. <laughs> the, the, the people that control people who carry the, a, pal- carry a pal- Oh, that's a very good question. I've always wondered that. <laughs> Palinquineers? Um so you know, and what they said about it, and you know, what I saw about Venice yesterday as I toured through it and you know, the, the sort of questions about where people stay and what people do and, you know, what the commoners are doing. Um, so we've, we've got Sid off with the skilled craftsmen. We've got Felicity off with the the um, uh, nobles. We've yeah. got Artemis off with the the artists and I'm kind of everybody else. Yes, so, you're the, yeah, the, the social... I'm uh, the ambassador to everybody else. Yes. So... Um, So I, I'm going to want to go into the town to actually mingle with people and listen and talk to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to need help getting there, but I'm going to want to be sort of dropped off and left and then picked up again later. I'm not going to want okay. to, to have the grand tour with my with the my very colorful escort because. Yes. The people I'm going to talk to today could easily be put off by that. Fair. Yeah. This works well, because uh, you hear some thumping and bumbling out in the hall outside of your apartment. Uh, and it, mm-hmm. it's the sound of somebody intentionally being loud and, and not mm-hmm. very well. Uh, sort of mm-hmm. letting you know that they're there without daring to knock on your door. Right. You... So I shall be a little bit loud in getting around yeah. to show that I'm up and around and it's okay for them to knock on my door. Yeah. 
<laughs> and there is a uh, uh, hundred knocks. It's just <laughs> like a woodpecker on your door. Too much Italian coffees in the morning. <laughs> I know, right? Come in. And the door just goes, uh, <laughs> slams open. And standing in the door, grinning all the way to the sides, is um, uh, Verite. And he says, I, I, um, um, I have a ride for you. Not the car, not the, not the orchid mobile. That's nice and everything, but I have a new one. And he, you have a new one. Okay. And he gestures grandly I, down I, the hall. I, I shall get my crutches and, and start <laughs> up. All right, I want to see this. When you get to the the stairs, the the stairs that go down from staff to to down to the down to the main floor, because it's one floor up. There's been a small addition. There's not a word said by anybody, but when you get there on each side of the stairway, it's a fairly narrow stairway because it's only for staff, right? It's mm -hmm. there's these little sort of sliders built in on top of the uh, on top of the edges of the stairs. That mm -hmm. looked like if you were to put your uh, your cane ends in them, there's a certain amount of friction, which would allow you to not have to actually walk your canes down individual stairs. You could just sort of slide them down these rails as you walk down the middle of the stairs. He and I'm going to look kind of nervously at Very Day. Mm -hmm. If you look at him, he looks at you and says, I'm very, very good with, with coefficients of friction. I'm. I I completely believe that. Um, I'm not as good at making use of the coefficients of friction, so can I? I need a little coaching. Uh, <laughs> and so I've got my I got my crutches around, you know, yep. strapped on my arms. It's like, okay, so how do I do this, very day? He reaches under a nearby bench and pulls out his version of your crutches. Uh huh. Slides them onto his arms, and he says, uh -huh. no, "I'm I'm a little bit taller than you, so my ankle's a little angular. But but you just stand here and you put that one in there and that one in there, uh -huh. and, then, and then you just walk." And he walks down the stairs, and there, there's sort of a a motion in the arms, right? Because your body's going up and down with the stairs, okay. but the the canes are moving at a, at a consistent forty five degree angle down the stairs, right? Okay, let me let me try this. And he turns around backwards in front of you, and uh huh. He's okay, to catch I, you I'm trying fall. it. Yeah. I I trust very take completely, so I'm trying it. It it's like an escalator that doesn't move. He is very good with coefficients of friction. Very uh, good. He, yes. he says just just make sure that they're not wet when you put them on here, and of course it doesn't work when you're going up. Right. Okay. So I do this and I make my way down. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of forgotten. When <laughs> and I try to relax as I'm doing it. Yeah. I try to relax as I'm doing it because I figure if I stiffen up, it's going to make it harder. Yeah. So. And you get to the bottom of the stairs and it's it's easy. I mean, it feels kind of weird because you've never done it before. So, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it, well, it saves a lot of concentration because you're not aiming every, you know, every yeah. step with those, with those things, right? But in no way, shape, or form is he trying to replace them or anything else. Right. He just made something easier. Right. So you get to the bottom and okay. he, he opens the door at the bottom and that Italian sun comes pouring in. And he gestures grandly and he says, your ride awaits. <coughs> you know, Verite, I mean, these stairs are kind of narrow. I don't suppose there'd be a way to have like a chair that would go up the stairs for me. Easy. I just didn't want to do it without you asking. Consider it asked. Okay. But first. Thank you. Your ride. My ride. Yes. And I step out so that I can see. Yep. What am I seeing? It's another <laughs> palanquin. Same sort of dimensions as the as uh -huh. the the, the uh -huh. one. Except this one's got like a hundred little robotic feet on the bottom instead of twelve carriers. And it's, for some reason, it's got a little white skirt with blue stripes, sort of stapled all the way around, covering most of the legs. Okay. Um, and 
This isn't going to scare off the locals or anything? Well, probably the first time. It scares almost everybody. That's why we put a skirt on it. Who knew somebody has so many people had so many problems with so many feet? I'm going to make the next I one. I couldn't guess. <laughs> I'm going to make the next one with giant cricket legs because that'll be different and everybody will be great with that. Um, I've well, if I get a it's better not gonna reaction, it's going to have those legs. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, that might get a better reaction than the feet. Yeah. They're just feet. Anyway, who wants to, you want to go for a ride? Yes. Um, is there, so what, I, what I'm thinking of doing is I want to go, I want to talk to, to people, um, but I'm going to want to get out of the, what do I call this? It's a palanquin. I will want to get out of the palanquin um, and, and sort of see... Uh, you know, sort of, I want to be with people where they are, which most of them aren't going to be with palanquins. Oh, oh, so. I don't know that I'm explaining this very well. So I could go with you and take it when you want to go out in the street, or you could just send it home. It's self-walking. Okay. And then how would I call it back later? Or you could send it back to me a few hours later. I would have to send it back because it's kind of like the stairs. Right now, it's sort of one way. Okay. That that would work marvelously. So let's go try it. I, I'm, is Terrence around? I'm going to need to borrow him probably to sort of, uh, like, tell me where to go. Oh, um, yeah, he's just having tea with the human dollies i'm looking at chat dolly dolly i don't know how dolly, to pronounce I, it. I think it's dolly i yeah. just i i, I wake you i'm just gonna call them lemvillians he's having uh tea with the lemvillians they carry their palanquins i mean <laughs> but they do it very stylishly a lot less feet Well, yes, there's only 24 feet there. How many feet have you got here? 106. That's a lot more feet. That's a lot more feet. It's, it, it, okay. it's, this way it's smooth because they're all landing at slightly different times. I will even that will makes admit sense. on a wet road, it's kind of a creepy sound. <laughs> Just an endless sort of like suction cup sound. It's like... Yep, like Squidward yep, yep, walking yep, yep, in Spongebob. <laughs> but yes. Okay. Uh, yep. So as you go looking for Terrence, we're going to cut away briefly because uh, I want to I want to bounce back and forth tonight because we've only got the two, so uh -huh. let's play. Um, <laughs> Sid, you, uh, after a long afternoon of planning and there's maps out on tables and Barry's got a pen out and he's drawing stuff and pipes and hoses and the sh the sherry's flowing and life is pretty good. It's all going well. They've, they're, they're not talking, you're not in the conversation when it comes to naming it. It's being named after you, so that's just what you're going to do about it. Um, many, many cappuccinos have been mixed in with the sherry's. Uh, some people would call that a sin, other people would call that a tell Italy. <laughs> Uh, that's how you got to balance your your liquids, right? Your caffeine and your and your <laughs> alcohol. But just not even as the sun goes down, but just at that part of the day where anybody who lives in a place that gets hot knows that too hot moment, like about five o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of summer. It's just everything. Just the the wind window. stops moving. It feels like you've breathed this air before today. There's just uh, it's all just stuck. And at that point, Barry looks out the window and says, Ah, as distasteful as I find this, it's time for business. And he drains his last little glass of sherry and puts it on the table, looks over to you, uh, Sid, and says, uh, The senior here is absolutely no good at talking to people. 
That's why his son runs the coffee shop. But you um, are also no good at talking to people. <laughs> but you need to get better. So, drunk, sober, what, what's the deal? Sid kind of holds his hand out. Currently sober. That's probably part of the problem. Um, we're going to start with, uh, and he looks out the window, yeah, dinner, uninvited, of course. How are you at crashing parties? And he just grabs another, a full bottle of port off of a shelf, because now he's got a gift, now you have to let him in. <laughs> and he heads for the door without waiting for you to answer the question. Uh, junior, or senior just looks at you and says, watch this, and follows Barry out the door. Sid kind of shakes his head. He's like, it's like dealing with journeymen all over again. <laughs> <clears throat> he makes his way. Barry after, is... you know, after, after doing the, the standard, you know, like making sure he's got everything, you know, yeah. it's like a pocket check for all his tools. Yeah. Spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch the whole day. <laughs> Turns out you were missing two of those. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but you step out into the street behind these two, and it's like being in the wake of a very large, very inefficient boat. He's only just started. He's only 20 steps down the street, yet somehow Barry is like a wedge in reality. He's helloing everyone, and there everybody loves him, and he remembers everybody's partners' names and their kids' names, and he's pressing palms. It's like he's running for office. But they did. They come up to him. They interact, and then they just part like the sea behind him, like a bow wake. And a couple steps behind, there's senior walking along, just sort of nodding to about one tenth as many people because he's been here for a while. He knows people. Yeah. And then there's this sort it, of turbulence behind it, waiting for you to step in. Yeah. Um. It'd be like degrees of, uh, you know, familiarity, pretty much. Yep. Um. Sid doesn't really say hi to anybody. He kind of looks super awkward in terms of the fact that he's walking down the middle of the street and yep. nobody's but talking you're, to him. You're getting a lot of nods and respectful looks and just by the company you're keeping. Plus, you realize, I mean, you've you you know, you've been here for a couple of days now. You know, you're <laughs> you've made your you've made an appearance in a couple of places, so everybody knows you. You're the guy that drives the car. You're the one that pretended to be the footman. You know, all that bullshit. But <laughs> they kind of know you. And they clearly have put you on, not the level of Barry, but like you're not just some dude that just got here. You're getting mo much more respect than that. He's still, like, he probably doesn't even have to talk for people to hear the foreigner in his voice. Because, I mean... Oh, no. Yep. At best, he speaks Italian with a Florentian accent. Yep, and you're dressed weird, and yeah, your mm -hmm. your your dress doesn't match your status. This town's all about yeah. status. You got a weird status anyway because you're staff, but you get to live in the house. There's a lot of odd staff stuff that's going not on. treated like staff. Exactly, but. Uh, it's only a couple of blocks, because uh, of course Barry would have it no other way. Until Barry finds a party. It is... Actually, if you would like to, go ahead and make a play to see if he was aiming for this party or whether he just found one and he's walking in on it. If you want to know. Um, call that perception? Yep. And yes, you're going to have to do the thing because I forgot my cheat sheet. Okay. Uh, we'll go with one success. One success. That's all it's going to take. Uh, he had no idea. He was just looking for a party. Uh, he's, he heads up the stairs and he does that thing where he just ignores the doorman. And the guy, the, the hand sort of reaches out to stop him. And then like a force field, he just sort of takes it back and puts it down by his side again. The line, there's a couple of people waiting to get in. They all just step back and Barry gets to the door and physically stops in the door frame. So that nobody can get between him and you guys. And Senior just comes up the stairs and nods to the doorman. And the doorman just looks off into space. 
And yeah. Then, um, yeah. <laughs> Sid's kind of like a like an apologetic shrug. <laughs> Lloyd. And the senior looks at you and he says, "Oh, don't do that. Just pretend like he's your dad." And he just pushes through the doors behind Barry. Barry doesn't, or neither of them see it, but the look Sid gives Senior is like, like my dad, huh? <laughs> yeah, I understand <laughs> now, yeah. As you, it's like, yeah. great, now he's here. Yeah. As you step into the grand foyer of this party, there's like, it's a ball, right? People are dressed to the nines. Barry's dressed too, so are you. You guys are dressed up, but it's not the same. Like, that's a black tie ball, and he doesn't care. Uh, he just hands the bottle to the first person he meets when he walks in the door. It's not even staff. It's a, another guest. Uh, do something with that. And he just walks into the room. And immediately, the party's about Barry. I don't, like there's, You look around and there's like, congratulations on your 30th on the wall. But that, nope. It, it's a Barry party now. He's got wine. Suddenly, he comes back to you. He's got two champagne glasses in this hand, one here and one here, and he's pushing a waiter at you, uh, the two of you with a whole tray more of them. Uh, take at least two, they're small. Sid, like, he grabs one, kind of looks at Barry. Barry sees grabs the a third and puts waiting. it between his thumb and his finger, so he's got them here, here, and here now. Like a little tiny table. The second one's just like, Never had champagne before. Oh, you've got something to drink while you watch me work. Uh, consider this drinking at school. And Senior says, oh shit, he's going to do the whole show. And Senior just walks over, takes two, walks over, just sits in a big comfy chair, and just leans back and crosses his leg over his other leg to watch. Barry looks at you, and you can see like a shimmer go around him and you're not sure if it's there or not but it's like watching a performer turn on hey k grams welcome hey he 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 turns around and he says quite loudly so people will notice it's been a long time since i've done this i wonder if i still can and he fountains the champagne from that one into that one into this one into his mouth puts the three of them back down and he says now, whose party is this? And he just takes over the room like a comedian uh, on the stage, right? Like, just no one dares get in the way. He's handing out drinks. He's schmoozing. He's talking. If you're following him around, you're hearing just noise. Like, he's just, he's the best socializer ever, ever, ever. But he continuously, constantly, every time you get close, he grabs you, pulls you in, introduces you to yet another family of people you're never going to remember their names of, uh, tells you where they live and how long they've been here, and then he turns and gives them the speech about you. It's never quite the same. It's always way more <laughs> than you'd be willing to admit. Uh, but he has pumping you up as the savior of this city. And every single time he does it, he hands you another glass of champagne. And champagne just tastes like bubbles. We, oh, look, another one's gone. Oh, these glasses really are tiny. Look at Barry go. He just had three. I, may, I can have another one. And Sid, <laughs> I need your first sobriety test of the evening. Okay. Uh, what would we call that? Uh, I think there's resistance. Oh, resistance is... What is that? That is a diamond. And unless you're, uh, uh, unless you're uh, good at it, you only get one card. Yeah. I will go with one success. Yeah. So you kind of whew, get a second out on the balcony, and uh, I mean, it's it's the sun has just gone down. Now you've been there three or four hours, and the only reason it's gone down is because it's going behind some. Uh, some volcanic remnants in the distance off in the west. But yeah, it's going down a little bit. You get outside, get a little bit of fresh air. Uh, Barry comes rolling out. Uh, doesn't even stop. As he goes past you, he says, uh, remember the magic ratio, three to two, and he hands you two tiny little cups of espresso. 
each with their own plate. So now you kind of got one in each palm because he does that and then just walks away again. Oh, by the way, they like you very much as he heads back inside. Sid has done this with teacups, but never with espresso. Yeah. So you see him, he kind of like, um, he has one teacup plate with, um, or one espresso, one of the, you know, because they're served on little plates. <clears throat> He's got one in between his thumb and his forefinger, and his um, other three fingers are supporting the second one. Yep. Uh -huh. And so he does that. Finishes off the flute of champagne that he's got. Yeah. And uh, he's like, three to two. Does he forget I'm English? <laughs> and at this point, Senior kind of almost like that last little bit of flotsam in the wake. Barry's gone back inside and that sort of pressure change. It's almost like that popped Senior out the other door where you are. <laughs> And he comes over by you, and he's got uh, an espresso at this point as well, just one. Uh, and he looks at you, he says, it's, it's a lot of fun, and by all means, go hard tonight. But in future, if you'd like to remember the end of the evening, can I suggest apple juice and a bit of carbonated water? Looks just like champagne. And he has a nice little drink of his espresso. Me who knows about Akabit. Um <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a sip of your uh, cappuccino or your espresso yet? I know you said he you would have just yeah. grabbed the first the first cup and like transferred it the second cup onto both plates. Yep. So you can smell it. It's world class. It is exceptional fresh ground espresso. There's also about a half an ounce of something alcoholic in there. Mm. It's Irish espresso. <laughs> the senior just grins at you and he says, well, it is an Italian party. And he turns around and heads back inside. I want to see what he's up to. <laughs> Sid's like, downs it, grabs the second one, goes over to the waiter. Could I get a fakey next time? He looks at you, Apple, apple juice and uh, soda water, sir. Yeah. As long as the berry doesn't know. <laughs> the berry. <Yeah. laughs> that wasn't intentional, but it is now. <laughs> he kind of grins at you, and because you've got this sort of just weird status where he can almost talk to you because you are almost staff, uh, he says, That guy's something else. You ever notice the closer he gets to somebody, the closer that person gets to their wife? <laughs> Pretty sure that one's got precedent, knowing him. <laughs> and actually, um, Senior happens to cruise back at the past at that moment, and he says, uh, All rumors, by the way, he's an absolute gentleman. He's been with the same woman for 30 plus years. Well then. <laughs> but you can see why when you watch Barry. When he walks up to a couple, he approaches, uh, if it's, uh, you know, a a traditional, uh, or a, you know, the couple that's standing there. If there is a female in the group, he will approach the females in the group first. He's very charming. He kisses hands. He starts with a handful of compliments that are nice and polite compliments, you know, not freaky, nasty ones. And only then does he turn to the men in the group and it, it, the voice changes. He's talking business with them. And every person he talks to gets a slightly different berry. It's it's like watching a consummate actor playing a character for each person in the audience. When he walks away, they're always nodding. They're always, yes, yes, yes. Oh, good good guy, good guy, Barry. Barry's a nice guy, yeah. And if you follow in his wake, they're all talking about you. Yeah. Sid wonders to himself... Um, what exactly Barry did to piss off the powers that be if he's this good talking to people. Mm -hmm. uh, senior comes up next to you and he says, uh, I, I, I'm sure you've watched him working the room uh, and I'm sure you've seen that he hasn't gone and he kind of nods with his head to that corner yet and you look over and there's 
the hoitiest of the toities, like there's the the four families are kind of over there in that corner. You can't sit with us. He says, uh, when, when, and I'm going to call him this because when he's over here, this is what they're going to call him. When the Baron approaches them, watch carefully. And then get ready, because once one of them comes over and shakes your hand, well, going to be busy for the rest of the night. He walks away, like, getting away from you before that happens. <laughs> because Barry's vectoring in on that corner. It's like wow. watching a shark and a school of fish. They're just getting smaller in the corner, and then they try and kind of squirt out one side, and he gives this, he's, he just cuts them off, cuts them off, cuts them like a sheepdog. And when he's got them pinned in the corner, he walks up to the hoitiest of the toity. You can tell because it's like it's all velvet and silk, right? And he slaps him on the shoulder and he gives him a big shake and he fixes his tie for him. Like just utterly unacceptable behavior from anybody in the world but Barry. And then at that moment where they're all standing their noses in the air, he turns around and points at you. And he turns back to them, and you can hear him over the crowd saying, That's the man that's going to replace you all, unless you're very, very careful. Oh, shite. And he, <laughs> and he waves you over, like, Come on, come on. Here's Senior giggling from behind a clock. Like, he's hiding behind a grandfather <laughs> clock. And he's got a glass of champagne again. And you can tell as you, you can... walk past, it's not apple juice. He's drinking again. <laughs> You know that sound when two really warm pieces of vinyl get pulled apart? <laughs> That's the sound that Sid makes when he tries to peel himself off the pillar he's been hiding behind. Yep. Uh, oh, like, yeah, like your legs on a, on fake leather in the summer. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> I had the tightest yes. blood hole, yeah. Yep. Uh, but yes, he's waving you over, and they're sort of in this curve in the corner. And he's sort of the epicenter of that curve. He's equidistant from all of them. We're going to leave you walking into that. Oh, as first, he's thinking. But for, oh no, start. You, you you start. Uh, no, you switch from yeah. the yeah, other stuff. So I'm not going to. Uh, he uh, the last thing. The last thing we say before he finishes the scene is like, "It's a good thing Coas can't see this." <laughs> and back with Allegra. The. Uh, the palanquin awaits. He has showed you how to drive it. Uh, he said, I didn't so think it would be dignified to have to lean inside it because people here dress really nice. So I just put a little tiller in the front. You just kind of point that where you want to go. And then when you want it to come home, just hit the big button on the on the dash. I can do that. And it's, oh, um, it's the only one of these in the world with a window on the front. And he pulls the curtains in front of you. And you can actually see where you're going. Because typically they've only got them on the I, sides, right? <laughs> okay, that's... that's. Yeah, you don't okay. have to hang out the window like a train engineer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, uh, we can do this. Um, has Terrence arrived? Yes. Um, Terrence is trying not to look down. Um, the You could tell... the think about he, it. he takes a really it. big step. From the from the curb, sort of up into the palanquin, trying not to get too close to the feet. Yep, yep, and yep, yep. As he sits down, there's a little bit of sweat running down the side of his face, <laughs> and he says, um, uh, uh, "Somehow the skirt made it worse. Oh, it's not so bad from in here. Where are we going? What are we doing?" Okay, so I want to go wherever. Um, uh, remember yesterday when we were when we were traveling around and I was asking about where people go and congregate and that's where I want to go today and then well let's see that see that button thing that um uh Verity says we can push that button and send it back and then he'll send this back to pick us up after a few hours okay um Plaza del Sol then as a starter uh, if that's what you called it, I don't 
remember much. <laughs> I'm presuming there's I was a little overwhelmed that... yesterday, so yeah. And I'm presuming that in, in an Italian city somewhere there's a place called the Plaza of the Sun. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, although, now that I think about it, I think I gave it a Spanish name, but never mind. Uh, maybe they're not from here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, he, um, yeah, and he says, do you want to drive or shall I? Um, why don't you give it a try? Okay. I mean, I trust Fairy Tate completely. I'm sure it will work beautifully the first time. The, the car was, like, the, 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 the orchid oh. mobile that you guys came in, that worked? There was no problems there? Uh, I didn't operate it myself, but yeah, no, I didn't, I, I didn't see any problems with it, no. We had those ironed out well before Allegra joined the show. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just thinking of Koa skidding down the oh. hill on the big metal one. Yeah, <laughs> but that wasn't a Verite mobile. Anyway, so he reaches forward and puts his hand on a tiller and sort of pushes it forward, but he's so tentative, like one of the feet goes, flip, and he goes, oh. <laughs> Like spot, like um, like a uh, sideshow just vlog. Just don't think about it. Let's just do this. Oh, maybe it's better if it's faster. And he pushes forward for the first couple seconds. It's bad because it's just like a thousand little feet, but then it kind of blends into a sort of blur. Just sort of. There we go. It makes the sound of the Jetsons. Yes, ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, complete with Doppler. Oh effect. yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you're, Except you're, an octave and a half lower. Um, you're driving through town, and um, I mean, you got a response yesterday. Uh, you're getting a different response today. Uh, actually, a whole series of responses today. It's kind of cool because there's a range, um, and it's more or less age related. The younger the person is, the more okay. likely they are to go ah, <laughs> uh, whereas their parents are shuddering and 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 calling it a freak show and just not at all pleased by the whole thing uh but the overall the response is a double take uh sometimes a triple take uh but this yeah just and finally it cruises up and uh he pulls the stick back and stops you can see you're about half a block away from a large open area that's all marble statues and fountains Perfect. so i thought we'd um Perfect. walk from here I I think so. Yes. So um, we'll, we'll get out and you know just then reach and push. That was the button there that Verity said to push to send it back, and so he, that it won't just be sitting here. And he reaches in the window and goes, "Oh, this is going to sound so bad from the outside." And he hits the button and kind of covers his ears, and it goes, <laughs> and then takes off up the hill back towards the the castles. Okay. It is. It is going. It appears to be going where it's supposed to be going, uh, but it's not getting out of anybody's way. People are getting out of its way. It's just kind of going. <laughs> it's not fast, so it's Wagons easy to... flying through the air. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so let's go see what we see in the plaza. What is it you're hoping to do? Well, as you're walking, all right. Um, I want to get to know some people. Park people. Sure. I, I'm. I'm. I don't know why I said it that way. I am so past questioning you. Uh, let's go. <laughs> I, I just, I want to meet real people with oh, real oh, oh. issues and real, you know, with, oh, with they're, they're real day-to-day -day lives and... They're real people and they got real issues. Let's go. He, <laughs> okay. Yeah. As you get to the opening and look out, it's... Um, well, I'm just going to describe what you see and then you can decide what you make of his take on it. This is the loungiest place you've ever seen. There are people lounging on the grass. There are people lounging on lounges. There are people lounging against statues. They're all chatting quietly with each other. There's a lot of wine. There's a lot of grapes. There's just, it's, it's like a, a, a symposium. 
in the original okay. sort of classic sense. So what did so I'll lean over to turn so what do these people probably do for their professions or for for their livelihood, shall we say? They're doing it. People come down here and pay to to learn to do it. You can't give me my real issues. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> you, you've come to Philosopher's Corner. I'm just. There's, uh, yep. So all right. and Democrats and all of them are out there. <laughs> so D-O-G. I shall find a um, park bench. Yep. Preferably since I did not bring my own lounge. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I shall find a park bench, and I shall, shall you know, sit and you know, tuck my crutches underneath, uh, underneath, and underneath my skirts and all that. And um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I shall look curiously around, and yet yeah, definitely gesture so that you know Terrence can join me. I shall. Look curiously around and see who's, you know, people seem to be talking to each other. Are they doing any sort of mingling at all? Or does everybody pretty stationary where they are? There's a couple of individual conversations and there's a couple of larger groups. Uh, But for the most part, it's fairly fluid. There's people moving around. There's a couple of sort of social centers. You know, there's always four or five people standing around them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, for uh, other than that, it's a lot of it's just one and two people hanging around together. You can kind of now that you've been here for a couple of minutes, you can tell from the fashions, the fashion marks the faction, so to speak. Uh, mm-hmm. There's you know there's these two very distinctly dressed group of people, and they tend to be discussing things with each other in a challenging mm-hmm. way. Uh, but there's and also let's, yeah. let me see. I'm dressed. In my usual comfortable style, mm-hmm. so I've got lots of cloth, but it's a it's very soft cloth, yeah, and all of that. So I'm not going to look like anybody here. Nope. And Terence is with me, and he doesn't probably look like anybody nope. here. He's dressed like a farmer, right? Yeah. Terence's left okay. finger has left index finger has done more work than this entire group of people, and it shows that right. like he's got the burnt skin and the you know the musculature and yeah. Okay. So yeah, you. So does anybody you become? Fit. Yeah. And we don't fit with each other either. Nope. nope. Um. Okay then. <laughs> 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 so we're going to. So uh, uh. Okay. So tell me. While we're watching here, Terrence, tell me some of about. Um. the different types of people currently in Venice. Um, you know, there's the people who, I'm sure there's the people who think, the people who do, the people who think about doing, the people, who, you know, but tell tell me about some of that. And that's going to be sort of an idle conversation as I watch to see, does anyone sort of meander over this way to sort of to check us out verbally? Yes. Um, both. So I don't I don't need a lot about what Terence is telling me basically. No, uh, what he what he tells you is that this group of people, the uh, these sort of these free thinkers, uh, they they're mostly second oldest uh, children, so they're not taken over. They're just kind of the they're going to live off the family the family dime all their lives, and they're never going to have to actually do the work. They're the sort of spoiled second children. Um, but having said that, they are still the children of the rich and powerful in this town, and not just the ones up on the hill. Uh, they might be intellectual um, elites in their own minds, but they're intellectual elites from all over the city. So there's some people here from up on the hill. There's some people here who can't, you know, they 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 sleep on the streets. They're real people. So there's the full. It's one of the few places where the full spectrum is 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 there but you're not talking to the top of any group right 
but it's access to absolutely everybody who is everybody in this town. Okay. And and by the way, Terrence, tomorrow I'm going to want to go where the working people are, the people that are choosing not to to, you know, take over any of the houses because that's they, they're not allowed to, so they don't. Oh, thank all the gods. A simple revolution. I'd give anything for a simple revolution. I yeah. I'm not sure the <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure that the people I'm with do anything remotely like a simple revolution. You don't do it simply. That's this is sure. this is when the the second part happens, and you hear a little voice. It's it's a very young uh, lady, uh, and she kind of out of the corner of her mouth, not directly looking at you, but definitely engaging you. Says, "Um, a lot of stupid stuff happens here. Who are you?" I am I am Allegra. I am uh, visiting with um, Felicity Caldwell, but um, uh, she's busy at the moment, so I'm doing other things. And and who are you? I am uh, so delighted to meet you. And as as you say, Felicity. And Caldwell, I'm looking at her straight yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Lady Felicity Caldwell. She's oh, I'm just, I'm so so, and she gives you the big serious bow. I didn't realize you oh, were part of the their... nonsense. No, 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 no. Stop it, nonsense. Don't do that. Oh. Um. And she just... Tell me your name. So let's start with you. Tell me your name. My name's Bianca. And she plunks herself down right between you and Terrence like he's not even there. Um. Okay. And I, I shall move a little bit so that I can try to say. You said your name was Bianca? Yes. Um. Ah. You wanted to. Talk to the people that and, live... And this is my friend Terrence, oh, and, as I lean around her and point to Terrence. And it's just like, oh, hi, and then back to you. Do you want to talk to the people that live outside? Well, sure, why not? What could you learn from them? They live outside. I couldn't easily live outside, could you? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean... Did you, did you used to live outside? I'm so well, sorry. no, but I mean, how? So, so having never done it myself, how would I know how it goes and what it's like if I don't talk to people who do it? There's a lot of people in this square that think they're pretty smart. But that just made me think more than anything I heard down here in a week. Why do they choose to sleep outside? I don't know whether they do. Do you? I was going to say the wise person is the person that doesn't know anything, but that just seems kind of... I don't know. Can I come with you? Let's ask somebody. Let's a let Well, let's ask somebody. Terrence, do you think that you... Can you spot one of them around here? As I lean around her again. Uh, <laughs> oh, um... A short trip down the, this little alley over here and we can be in a um, well what some of these folks would refer to as a less salubrious part of town you know some place where you can unpucker and loosen up a little bit well Bianca let's take a couple of your friends let's let's go ask some people to the gray square and like you can feel sure. her you can hear her throat close it up but 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 um, bring a couple of your friends. I or bring a couple of bring a couple of people that you would that you tend to find interesting to talk to, and let's bring over. Now we we need when we go there, we're going to need to be respectful because you know this isn't like a zoo where we're just there to gawk at people. We're there to engage with them and and you know as human be the human beings that they are. And she looks around this square of people that are just jabbering and she's i don't trust any oh of i'm them. sorry are these not human beings but they, I, i'm, I'm so sure they sorry. i'm sure they are but i don't trust any of them to shut up and listen oh well let's just start with you and me then and terrence okay Ter hi terrence and, uh, and i i uh, i ring down and pull out my crutches 
and get, oh, oh. get myself up. And then, the, like, the worst cover-up ever of, of being surprised that you're where, that you have crutches. Yeah. Um, so, um... So let's go talk to some people. I mean, you seem very interesting to talk to, and you you seem curious and wanting to know things. And I love people. I love talking with people who want to know things because I want to know lots of things too. I want to know lots of things too. But Terence is going first, right? She's still not looking well, at him. She points over her shoulder to him. We're going together, right, Terence? And it's like, and I shall go side by side with Terence, and yep. Bianca can go in front or in back or next to her wherever she wants to. Ter- Terrence is putting on a bit of a farmer act. He's like, oh, yes, miss. Absolutely, <laughs> miss. And he stands up and he's kind of standing there like, a, you know, like almost like, the again, the Monty Python with the thing tied around it. The uh-huh, tied around uh-huh. his head. He's playing it, right? And she's just, like, just doesn't know what to do with herself. Oh, she's don't. insulted and, or she's insulted him. And you know. Oh, don't mind him. He's having a bit of fun with you. <laughs> and he just laughs and, and heads down the alley. And we shall, we, we shall uh, walk down. And it's like, it's, and now remember, we don't want to, we're not there to gawk. It's like um, she's walking uphill. Although wouldn't it be fun, <laughs> although wouldn't it be fun to bring some of them back to here to gawk at all of these folks? Wouldn't that be kind of fun? <laughs> that makes Terrence laugh. He just <laughs> <laughs> maybe you know, liberate a few to wallets too. <laughs> critter in the zoos. And down. so, how? What does it? It. Uh, I, I will keep talking and yeah. you know engage and, and sort of engaging Bianca whether or not you know whether or not she responds and and Terrence as well. How long does it take Bianca to get over her shock and start sitting up a little? Uh, well. Just as she or would you like to... me to make a play to oh, figure no, out just, how long Just as she's starting <laughs> to breathe, you come to the end of the alley. And Terrence has taken a couple steps in and just crossed his arms, and he's turned around waiting to see the response. Right? Not from you. Uh, he knows you're good with everybody, but he wants to see mm-hmm. Bianca's response. And I, I nudge him as I come up, and it's like, don't gawk. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's just grinning, and he's nothing to gawk at. And you look out into the most normal town square ever. Oh, thank There's God! There's people this is getting where I water out of the out of the well. There's a couple kids fighting over there. There's some chickens and some ducks, and like it's a real proper town square. And Bianca is oh, standing lovely. like it's all covered in poop. She's just standing in a very tiny spot. And I shall I'll elbow her then and say okay. Uh, let's start, you know, the well is a good place to socialize. Let's go over to the well. Okay. And I will start making my way over. Yeah. And she starts, like, you're, and, and she's just moving with you, so her movement is every bit as sort of st- stuttering as yours is. And Terrence is, takes up a position behind the two of you in the sort of guard mode. Right, he's, uh-huh. just, he's just watching, but nobody's paying the slightest bit of attention to anybody except Bianca, because she don't right. fit in here. She's clean. Uh, she hasn't got a bucket. She's you know, <laughs> so there. Pure pastels on a field of brown and gray. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, she's um, um, so. If, if, if we pass, if we pass a little area, and if if there are like uh, some dandelions growing. Yep. Or, or the equivalent, you know, yep. just sort of of scruffy wildflower sort of things. Yep. Um, I, I'm going to stop. I'm going to reach down and, and pick one. And yep. I'm going to tuck it up behind Bianca's ear and say, here, that, that this will make you look much fit in better. Oh, it smells nice. And she's kind of trying to smell it. But it's here. So she's kind of... <laughs> oh, here, and I'll get her. I'll get her another one. It's like so, yeah, it's, here you that, go. It's one under her nose. And now, if you rub it on your skin, it'll make your skin yellow. Uh, and she's like, just she's just <laughs> fascinated. <laughs> You've given her something to and focus so, on. Yeah. Uh huh. And so uh, we'll keep walking over towards and settle down. Um, because there's, I'm sure there's some sort of seating next yep. to next to the well. And I'll yep. look over next to the well. Um, and whoever's at the well, um, I'm sure they're focused on Bianca. Uh, well, and most people they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, someone who's doing something 
but you know, as focused on Bianca, I'll sort of lean over and say, you know, she's practically a real person too. And I'll reach over to kind of help whoever it is with their their bucket a little bit. You know, put yeah. the I think I sort of uh, help, here. Let me help you with that. And it's um, let's let's make this fun. It's a a youngish gentleman. He was just pulling the last of his bucket up out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, he he lets oh, you. Oh, careful! Don't spill that. Oh, th thank you. Thank you'll have to you. do it again. Thank you. And he takes his little uh, wooden cup out of his belt pouch, and he scoops a little bit out of it and hands it to you. So thank thank you for your help. Oh, they, oh, thank you. And I will drink a little of it and I will hand it to Bianca. And he goes, oh, 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 oh. And she's just like got the flower and she has a sip before he has a chance to say anything. And I'll she... take it back and I'll say, thank you so very much for that. Oh, Terrence, did you want some too? Uh, and he just sort of hands the the bucket and the cup mm -hmm. over to Terrence. <laughs> he, he is now, he, he is besotted as only uh, a teenage boy could possibly be, right? He is just focused uh -huh. on Bianca because she's different and she drank his water. Uh -huh. um, um, and she uh, smells like flowers. And she's got flowers behind her ear and everything else. And, and he <laughs> pulls himself away. He, he keeps trying to talk to you, so his eyes go to you, he starts to talk, but then they drift back to her. Uh-huh. Like, and what's uh, Bianca doing? Uh, uh, flustering. Uh, flustering quite a bit. Uh, she said, "Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, hi, I'm, 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 I'm Bianca." He says, "Yeah, I know, uh, um, but um, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm from." And he says, "Not from here." And yeah, there. And they're... I'll, uh, yeah, and I, I shall sort of uh, step in. It's like, okay, so uh, thank you for the water. Make sure he's getting his his bucket. Now, is this his bucket or is this the well's bucket? Uh, this is my mom's bucket. Okay. I can almost okay, thought this so, should yes. kill me. Yeah, well, well and hey, make yeah. sure it's plenty full. Make sure it's plenty full. You don't want her having to send you back for more water. Well, she probably will I, send I you don't, back for more water, but I don't I, I I already want to come back for more water. Well, that's good. Take this to so go take this to your mother and fill in her kitchen, her kitchen sink, and then come back okay. and get some more water. Okay, okay. Um I'll 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 be right back and he backs away he's got the bucket he's backing away and then he just turns and sprints like he's trying to get home and back before you leave and i shall lean over to bianca and say i bet you get treated like that by all the young men in your circle no i no not why not how why ever not you're young and pretty. You should be getting that reaction from all the young men. Well, they try, but all they want to do is argue. And as much as I like a good argue, what is it my mom says? Oh, yeah, time and place. <laughs> so let's uh, let's go ahead and, and sit down here. Uh, sit down here. Yep. There's always people coming and going from the well. And as uh, particularly like an, an older one, yeah. uh, you know, like an older woman uh, comes up and, and oh, nudge at Terrence. And it's like, get, give her a hand with that. You know, it's like, oh, grandmother, please let, let us help you with that. Don't you have a young thing to do this for you? And a nudge at Terrence go. Uh, Terrence is, goes to get up, but Bianca gets up first. And leaps, oh. le leaps into the way. And as she does so, you see, you asked her to sit down, and now the whole back of her outfit is just filthy where she sat down. Because in my head, uh -huh. she was wearing very pale colors, and now there's just this filth streak all the way down the back. And she doesn't either doesn't notice or hasn't uh, doesn't care. One of the two, she starts hauling up the the rope, and it's a rough old hemp rope. You can see like her hands are not. She doesn't have the calluses, right? So it's out, out, right. out but she's doing And I'll, I'll gesture to the older woman to, you know, sit here with me while Bianca gets your bucket for, well, Bianca fills your bucket for you. And how are you today? What is, um... Oh, you know, the knee and uh, there's weather coming and, uh, you know, the whole, the whole, uh, uh -huh. it's like the oh, is all I'm, again, yeah. I'm sure you're right. And here I have my crutches leaning yes. up next to me. They aren't just sick. I was like, yeah. oh, tell me about it. Yeah. 
I'm moving much more stiffly today than usual on, on that. And, but, but really, Grandmother, don't you have a young thing who can do that, who can come down and get water for you? Uh, there's several that should be doing it, but, um, you know, grandchildren these days, they just they keep pissing off and not doing it. Well, so which, so which quarter are you from? Where are you from? I mean, you must be somewhere close here if this is your neighborhood well. Uh, yes, I've, uh, during the nice days, we sleep up here. Uh, when it's more miserable, there's uh, narrower alleys down by the water. Oh, better sheltered, sure. Less, less Although wind. down by the water, doesn't it get cold and damp down there? Oh, it gets, and she sort of bends an elbow on her shoulder. She's, I'll creak for days, but at least it's out of the wind. Yeah, I can see where that would make a big difference. So, um, I think this one I I want to, so as, as Bianca's got the bucket yep. back for her, I shall just beam at Bianca. Absolutely wonderful. Well, what a fantastic job you did there. Um, grandmother, why don't we help you take this? Why don't we help you take this bucket to where you're where you're going right now? Why don't we do that? And I'll pull out my crutches and I'll start getting up and I'll to walk to walk with her and and I'll give Terrence a look to offer to take the bucket from Bianca to carry it. He he takes the bucket before you even look and he knows you well enough to know what's coming. So he just yep. picks up the bucket. And he looks at Bianca and with the biggest, sweetest, most innocent looking face he could slap on the front of his head, he says, maybe it's in the direction where that nice boy went. And Bianca just turns and starts <laughs> leading the way. Like she's not even waiting for grandma. She's just, she's leading the way. And Terrence grin, turns to the two of you and grins and says, don't worry, I'll keep her safe. And he goes off after Bianca to to follow her. I, I I do hope that's the direction that you're going because I think your bucket's going that direction regardless. <laughs> there was a young man here getting water just before you. You probably saw him heading off when you came back and, and I do think that Bianca is, is a bit smitten. I know he was a bit smitten. <laughs> she just shakes her head like, oh my god. My and gosh. I'll just walk along with her chatting comfortably with her. She and I are both going to go about the same slowness, her because yep. of her knees and me because of my crutches. Yep. And I'm going to go wherever she's going. And this is a, this is a knows everybody lady. Uh, she's like a mm -hmm. much subtler version of the, of uh, Barry. Uh, mm -hmm. She needs, you know, Oh, how are you doing? Are you two still in that alley? Are the, you know, are all six of the kids still doing well? You know, she knows everybody. She's got her finger in everybody's business. Uh, this is exactly the person I want. <laughs> yeah. In the distance, you okay. hear Terrence laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not at you. <laughs> I just, I just saw what, yeah, what she meant. And, I'm, yeah, yeah. and at this point, Allegra is going to listen and talk with people and and get their experiences and stuff. She's not going to suggest they do anything outlandish. Absolutely. Yeah. Yet. Yet. So yeah, you're yeah. I, I absolutely it's like, hey, that's really smart. Sleeping in alleys, all that. So sort of she's stuff. gonna yeah. get in with a, you know, wherever they are, whatever they're doing, she'll get her hands in it. If they, you know they're fixing some meager food or something, if they're trying oh, yeah. to pick up something in order to, to settle, whatever it is that they're doing, she will help and make sure anyone standing anywhere nearby is also helping. Yes, and she's yeah. going to be Allegra, of course. Absolutely, uh, which the end result being. Everybody around you is helping and doing, and things immediately start getting better. That in that specific little region, right? And yeah, absolutely. This is making that connection between you and this established figure in the community. Therefore, making yourself an established figure in the community. And I do want to get a chance after a little while to sort of talk quietly with Bianca. Yeah, after she gets back. Absolutely. After okay. she gets back, yes. In that case, we will see you, because that's how it's, you know, if I pronounced it phonetically. We'll, we'll, we'll segue, just so everybody knows I know how to say the word. Um, <laughs> we will segue back to Sid. Um, I'm waiting for Verite to make me a segue. 
<laughs> you, that's one of those. Anyway, back he, to Sid. He gave, you, he gave you the rules tonight. You have to ask for anything I that's know, active. I know. Yeah, he will do all the passive shit he can think of, but he's not doing anything active without being asked. So, Sid. Um, I know Bison knows that moment in the night where you have officially had too many drinks. Yep. You're not like, you know, it's not it's not falling down time, it's not being sick time, it's not acting like a teenager time, but you have officially had more than you should have had. <laughs> um, I don't need to roll for that yet. Uh, but it's that weird sort of, the world starts getting smaller, right? It's only sort of the people right in front of you, you're hearing parts of conversations. Every once in a while, Barry just blows through the scene and <clears throat> like a fireball. You um, feel a hand on your shoulder from behind. It's a, You can tell from the angle the person is smaller than you that's reached up to put their hand on your shoulder, and they're trying to turn you. I think Sid wouldn't catch it right away. Yeah. And, like, you know, the first tug, nothing happens. Yeah. And then Sid sort of, can I help you? And they walk around in front of you. And it's a person that's probably pre maybe a little younger than you, but not much. It's a, a, a young lady, and she says, um, my dad's taken kind of a shine to you. Um... I think Sid kind of looks around for, like, glaring eyes. Yeah. You know, because taking a shine could take, you know... Yeah. You know, take a shine to you, yeah, because he's going to beat the crap out of you once you leave. Uh, <laughs> and he's like, well, who's your father? Um, I think you know him as Barry. The Baron has a daughter. He has a number like, of daughters, but as the like, legal one. Oh, well, that does explain a few things. Um, it's, it's also uh, it's also a lie. Senior told you earlier he doesn't step out on his wife. Yeah. So, yeah, I think Sid kind of plays along with it, uh, transfers his drink to his left hand, holds his out. Sid Brimlock. She says, so you're going to have to do better than that. This is Italy. And she reaches up and grabs one corner of your mustache and pulls you forward so that she can do the both cheeks the kiss. Cheeks thing. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't know we were on that level of acquaintance. But it's a pleasure to meet you. If my dad's going to help you take over this city, then you're damn right you deserve that. He won't shut up about you. Like at all, even during dinner. Oh, bloody hell. I'm not looking to take over the city, I'm looking to fix it. Grimlocked and loaded. That's what he <laughs> says about you. He says he you just... remind him of him, except you can't talk. So you seem to talk okay. I'm a little prickly, to say the least. Yeah, um, I know I grabbed it. <laughs> My wife's having... You okay? Okay. Okay. She's laughing. Okay, good. That's what's going on. All right. That means uh, we good. both get to live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he's just... Sorry, I lost my train of thought completely. It's okay. She looks up at you and says, uh, I'm Maria, by the way. Me. And you're Sid. You yeah, really he's like, can't talk. I told you I'm not very good at this. I don't. I'm better at doing. And now they've got me locked in a bloody office staring at maps. Talking is doing. It's just doing it with your face. It's Sid just looks another down skill. At his arms. It's just another skill. 
My dad can't pull a wrench for shit. Nobody's got away with words. He's got away with all the words. He's had his way with all the words. <laughs> Sid's drunk enough that that's funny. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, I'm going to need his help because, as you can tell, I'm not very good at this. And I think I pissed off that entire corner of people. He points over to the hoities. She grins and she says, good, want to do it again? And without asking, she slides her arm around yours in the sort of, you know, hooked arms thing and starts dragging you back to that corner. Oh, hell. She says, just agree with everything I say. You might want another drink. I'm going to need at least one. And, she... and at the back of his head again, he's very, very glad Coas is not here. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, she, uh, there's a little flicker of you could see the daughter in the father. She does this, like the finger snap, and there's a waiter there with, with a tray of drinks. And it's not champagne, it's like proper highballs, you know, proper drinks. Yeah. And she just grabs two of them apparently at random and she looks at you and says, you look like a whiskey man. And she hands you a glass. and you, It's just two ounces of rye on ice. Is your entire family like this? Like what? And she knocks back two ounces of gin and reaches for another glass. I have my answer. <laughs> so for this, let's make you a... And she steps up to the group and she says, I know you're all so stiff-shirted that it's hard to do, but shouldn't you be bowing in the presence of royalty? And she takes a half a step away from you, never takes her, her hand off your arm, but gets just enough of space to give you a very meaningful and bullshit bow. <laughs> when the Duke of Bilbao is present, certainly you should. And she just stops and looks at them, and they know. Like, there's just, like, no way. There is no way any of them are going to bow to you, but there's this weird, uncomfortable, tense moment because <laughs> she went somewhere she shouldn't have gone. <laughs> and she looks at you, and she says, See, I told them. Stick up their ass. Every single one of them. Let's go get a drink. And she just turns around and drags you away. Yeah, Sid's kind of got that, um... If you could see under the mustache, <laughs> you'd understand just how bullshit this is, but it's covering a lot of his emotions. Yep. <laughs> and she is just, the, in her own way, she's much more subtle, uh, but in her own way, she's every bit the social uh, beast that her father is. And she takes you on a cycle of the room to meet all the people you didn't meet before. Everybody under 40. <laughs> so and she introduces you to the bar staff and she introduces you she shows you where you can go out the back door and get some fresh air away from the people and it's, first of all master party tactician like tactician just knows where to go just this is their world right that you do steam they do social events right uh, and the whole time it's like showing you places to get away and introducing you to the people and she's got this habit as she walks up to people, she says, you don't have to remember this one. And then she introduces you to somebody and then you a couple of words and you walk away. And the next one, she says, try to remember this one. And then she introduces you again. There's still way too many, but she's telling you in these quick sentences who's important. Mm -hmm. But she I think is... would probably try to do his best, but he's a couple berries deep at this point. Oh, yeah. And she's uh, she's more or less speaking for you. Like, she introduces you, they say something, you try and say something, and she just rolls in. Mm. And not like she's not cutting you off. She's, like, being your representative, right? And it's it's <laughs> just, oh, it's like having an agent. Uh, yeah, and, he's getting uh, very used to nodding taciturnly. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> as after another couple of hours, because we're just going to drag this one out, um, the, the party hits that part where everybody's had too many, 
And now that sort of weird survival swirling around the drain of going home thing starts to happen. Where he just starts to, you know, pretty soon I gotta go. And then he leaves. But uh, it's that part the of 45 the 45 minute goodbyes. Yeah. Uh, Barry is now um, holding court in one corner to an increasingly small group of people. But he's launched in a chair. Somehow he's got his bottle back that he came here with and a glass and he's drinking his very expensive port at the end of this huge long party. It's still, you know, uh, and he's just talking. Nobody's listening. Uh, Maria walks over and takes the bottle out of one of his hands and he doesn't even stop talking. He's still, ah, da, da, da. she takes the glass out of the other hand and his hands don't even stop moving. Ah, da, da, da. She's like, there, okay, dad. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Heard it a thousand times before dad. Yeah. 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 I know queen of Austria. Yeah. 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 And she just sort of, Picks him up under one arm and sort of does that professional uh, child of an alcoholic walking them to the door thing. Except she's every bit as faced as he is. But it's just, it's still, it's like watching uh, two ocean liners be dock. You know, it's just, it's just <laughs> slow and grand and somehow not funny at all. They somehow make an amazing exit leaving you in that room with all those people. Well, not all those people. There's only 10 or 12 left. Yeah, Sid looks to Senior and it's like, I think we're at that time where we're both making our ways to our beds. I'm sure your wife has a word. Yes, alcoholic, I think, is the one she likes to use when I come home at this time of night. Uh, worth it, though. Oh, oh, absolutely worth it. Isn't it something else? And I see you met his child as well. Charming, charming young lady. If she's a tornado <laughs> of her own. <laughs> Remind me, when we're both sober, to tell you about the time that she and her father played a little game. But not tonight. And he's Not sort of, yeah, he does that wide-legged walking towards the door like you could tell he's drunk because his little legs are a little bit wider than shoulder with the fart. <laughs> I think Sid's doing his own at that point. Uh, at that point, he was wearing, he was wearing his nice apron. Yeah. That's now straps down. Yeah. Um, if he was any shorter, it would, the top loop would be dragging along the ground. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, he sort of makes his way back. Um, I would say he walks senior home. Yep. Uh, which ends up being very near the uh, the coffee shop. And makes uh, sense. he says, as you get in there, you, you've had a chance. Like, it's a walk. So you've had a chance to not sober up, but at least get some air in right mm -hmm. on top and it's been you know sort of half an hour since you've had a drink now so yeah you can probably just about make sense of the world again and he says i need a coffee come on in come on in and he uses his key to open up the coffee shop he goes back to the machine and he says i taught that kid of mine everything and he stops and he says almost everything i know about steam you want to know the one thing I never taught him? And he's firing the machine up as he's doing this. Yeah. The pressure is building, and you see the little gauge flicker up into the green, and he's making minute adjustments. And he comes around to your side because you're like he's he was behind the counter. You're out mm -hmm. in the counter, like on the, the counter side. He comes around to your side, and he says, "You want to know the real secret?" What's that? He reaches down one finger and touches this little spot on the back of the machine, and you see a flicker, sparkle of something. It's not, it's not a spark, but something goes from him to that machine. He looks at you and he says, The secret is, it's magic. And he walks around the other side of the counter and without saying a word, the machine has just finished and he brings out this little, little bitty cup, a little bit bigger than an espresso cup, but way smaller than a cappuccino cup, right in between. And he puts it on the table and he says, um, 
I know you're all about the tea and everything, but have you ever had a cafe crema? And he picks up his little cup from behind the counter and has a little sip. And you look down, and it is the de deepest, richest, darkest. Like, you ain't seen the bottom of this cup through this coffee. No, 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 no. And the smell. Oh, it's but it's got that disc on the top. It's not foam. It's not cappuccino. But there's just sort of this disc of foam sitting on the top. It's rotating slowly. I can't say that I have. He takes a sip. And as you do, I mean, you can't see it, but you can feel that zzzt, that same magic that he mm -hmm. called uh, with the machine, sort of that little, like, licking a nine-volt battery, right? Just zzzt, on the tip of your tongue as you drink it. Or maybe you just burned your tongue and you're drunk. Who knows? But it feels like a zort. <laughs> And in that moment, he looks at you and he holds up his cup and he says, uh, for the city. For the people. And he returns the clink. And we're going to leave you there. Allegra. I want to finish with this because you get to Grandma's house. Well, Grandma's piece of the alley. She wasn't kidding. She lives in an alley. But what she failed to leave out was there are some fairly solid walls built at both ends of this alley. And there is a significantly waterproof roofing bit that sort of fills in the whole top of the alley. Looking very much like a house. But kind of inside out, because the walls are bad. <laughs> uh, and she says, um, Welcome to my humble not an abode. She opens the door and waves you in. Isn't this quite the adaptation? Well, you can get, Very away, with, nice. you can get away with a lot when your knees hurt. And she starts, she stands up straight. And, and I just hear her to, I... crack her back. Yeah. Yeah, and I gesture to my uh, crutches, it's like, I am sure you do. <laughs> and there's a knock on the door at that moment, and uh, it opens. They don't, they don't, you know, there's there's no waiting, and she doesn't say anything. There's just a quick knock, and the, the door opens, and you just see a, a pair of arms come in and put a plate of uh, food, bread and, and grapes and, you know, just uh, mm -hmm. like food on the floor, pull the door closed. Not a word spoken. She says, oh, oh, yes. And she goes over and bends over and puts it up on the table. Lunch. Okay, but why do you have to pick it up to put it on the table? Because I don't let them inside. If I did, they'd never stop. The one I let in spent 25 minutes trying to comb my hair. Okay, and so I shall sit and I shall partake of lunch with her. Mm -hmm. And as you do so, this keeps happening. Quick knock on the door, you look over, a, a, a fresh vase of flowers gets slid in, door closes. She goes over, picks it up, puts it on the table by the window. The window's left open because it's a nice day. A pie gets slid in through the window while you're chatting. <laughs> Little note, so, heard you had a guest. Why don't you put a little table next to the door? She closes the window, puts her foot against the door so it's blocked, and she says, I wouldn't want to make it too easy on them. Takes her Got foot it. off the door, opens the door, opens the window, comes <laughs> back, sits down. Bye. Like you haven't even had lunch yet. Maybe maybe a grape and a half a slice of bread. <laughs> uh, lovely. I don't suppose there's any tea around here. She says, now you're getting it. Three, two, one, and plunk, the tea comes in the window. <laughs> very nice lady, right across the alley. Her son <laughs> runs back and forth. Not very smart, but at least he's got something to do. Interesting. 
So what do most so what do most of your neighbors do then? Oh. I I gather it's a it's what a twenty five year or whatever of doing things before they get to move into a, a house or some such. I'm not sure how how that is managed. Technically, you've only got a chance at it if you've actually worked for one of the five top families. Really? Yes. So they're some sort of gatekeepers for this sort of thing. I like that. Uh, doorkeepers, even, because technically we're not supposed to have them. Ah! Well, why doesn't someone go around all those abandoned places and just take the door off? We tried that, and a long time ago, it didn't work. And you know how I people are. I would work now. Exactly. I keep saying it, but no one listens. I mean, just because it didn't work then, how long has it been? If it's been quite a while, it's certainly worth trying again. What are they going to do? Come and throw us out? I know, right? That's what I've been wondering. I've only been here a few days, and I have been wondering that the whole time. It's like, how would they even do that? If, you know, even if they had armies, what, what army would obey an instruction like that? I, I mean... And, and they don't. They don't even have what they used to call police. Hmm. Are any of the houses... So I noticed here in the, the square, what did Terrence call it? The gray square? Um... You know, they're, they're, it's surrounded by buildings. How many of those buildings are technically inhabited? Technically, none of them. In reality, uh -huh. depending on the day, about half. Bad weather, a little more. The thing is, with a very few exceptions, and she points around to her shelves and her buttery and her kitchen, we don't stay inside at night, outside in the day. Well, especially as nice as the climate is here, that seems like a perfectly sensible thing to do. I honestly don't know why anyone would live more than 20 degrees from the equator, dear. Especially yes. with our bones. And she creaks again. <laughs> So you're suggesting? Oh, I'm not suggesting anything yet. I'm oh, mostly all right, trying I'll do to it learn then. the lay. Yes. I'm mostly learning the lay of the land. She says, "All right, then I'll suggest roofs oh, and do, doors. Do. It's not that much to ask. Maybe a window or two. That's the stuff. Well, especially since they're not, especially since they're not being used by others. I mean, you know, there is such a thing as establishing a fact. That sounds very legal, dear. My thought is, once you've got a couple of pictures nailed up on the wall, they're not going to make you leave. You know, I've been thinking, I have been wondering, it is so nice when, when you've got, you know, a good day and, and neighbors gather together and look around the neighborhood and sort of see what needs to be done and... and you know, just have a, the whole community feeling of, of accomplishing something together and making things, you know, some of the things that haven't been done, making them easier for people. And it's just, it's such a lively and, and uh, community building thing. It's just, it's so much fun to do. You know, the, this, this square that I was just visiting, it seems like such a marvelous place for that. Is such a thing likely to happen anytime soon? I would love to be there and assist. And she opens the already open window a little further and she says, Did you not get that? <laughs> and she looks over at you and she says, uh, Spontaneous things of the sort have been known to happen. Looks out the window <laughs> to make sure that they've got it. You are such a delight, but my name is Allegra, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, hello. They just... Uh, they just call me the, um, the grandmother. Well, I can see why, since I believe I called you that myself not ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so tell me about so tell me about your your neighborhood. How is it? How is it feeling at the moment? Uh, is right, it is right it, at the moment? Is I, it, right at the moment, I believe they're planning a festival of sorts. Uh, so they're probably oh, quite lovely, busy. Aren't yes. They? Uh, you know what though? You know what? what really helps when my back hurts this way? Oh, do tell me. A bit of a drink. Clunk. A, a bottle of... lands in the window. Right. Oh, why well, look here. Uh, do let me get that for you. And I, I take my crutches. <laughs> get yeah. over. You know, uh -huh. Put one down. Lean down. Uh -huh. Bring it up. Take my crutch back up. Lean back over. And she too pulls out two wooden cups, like not wine glasses at all. She could have wine glasses. All she'd have to do is say, I want wine glasses and they would be here. But yeah, she pulls out these two handmade wooden cups and pours a little bit of dandelion wine in each one. Oh, this is lovely. You know, I, um, I confess I've been a little mischievous today. Oh, do tell. Oh, yes. Well, um, so I went down, I, I had my, my friend Terrence take me to the Sun Plaza. And I'm afraid, I'm afraid I had enticed a proper young lady to come with me to uh, the Gray Square. Um, the one with dirt all down her back. Yes, that's the one! <laughs> you noticed her, I'm not at all surprised. She oh, yes. Yeah. I, I do think, I, I confess I'm very curious as to what she's going to tell them when she gets back to the Sun Plaza. That would be fun to watch, because she's actually seen something and done something. I don't think the rest of them have in ten years. Do you have any, uh, can you point me to several uh, likely youngsters here in, in your neighborhood, um, particularly ones that are curious and intelligent? Um, I could do with an escort back to the the sun plaza and i was thinking you know having a few lively young things to keep me company and do some chatting could be um did i mention i'm a little mischievous today <laughs> and uh she laughs again and she says they'll be waiting for you outside this will be fun you never know what's going to happen when you do a little bit of mixing so yes, um, maybe we can put some posters over in that, uh, the marble square, the, the, this, what is it they call it? The uh, Plaza del Sol? Something like that, yes. Is what Invite some telling. more of those clean young people down here? You know, especially for like the, you know, if there's going to be kind of a festival, where, you know, actually working, cleaning some stuff up, doing a little bit of planting, maybe some painting and repairs. Stuff like uh -huh. I, it would be awful. You know, some of them, uh, they didn't quite look fit, but they're young enough they could potentially have some energy. I bet they could get some, you know. Oh, when they're they showing could... off, they'll do anything. Uh, we could have them build a bloody exactly. cathedral. Do you need a cathedral? And you hear from outside, no. Uh, no, right. apparently we don't. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we'll there's skip probably the twelve. Parts I should have looked, but there's probably twelve of them in Venice. I mean, it's it's Venice. So there's at least one. Uh, you, the other. Uh, one's I'm sure there is. Fifty, fifty meters of ash. The other one where you started, but never mind. <laughs> uh, yes. So yes, uh, you also said you wanted to meet Bianca on the way out, right? Uh, yes, I'm going to want to, okay. yes. And so as, as, yeah. yeah, and so as I have a few, um, because I don't want her to be lost. So before I head back, I need to collect Terrence and Bianca. Yes. So yeah. I get Bianca safely back to her space. Yeah. Well, um, when you, uh, go out to find them, you can see Terrence. Uh, he's, you know, he's a big strapping dude. You can see mm -hmm. him coming down the street laughing so hard there's tears running down his eyes bianca is just a little bit in front of him completely oblivious she has gotten more flowers woven into her hair she's got a big bouquet of like mostly weeds because it's all she could find <laughs> here 
she's you can almost hear the Bugs Bunny and love music that do 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 as she wobbles down the street. Uh, and behind her, Terrence is just howling. He waves at you. Uh, he points at her and goes, <laughs> oh, <he's nice. laughs> as as uh, yeah, as they approach, uh, Terrence turns around and looks back, and the boy has been like half a block back, sort of hiding and watching. And Terrence turns around and looks at him and gives him the head shake. I'm starting to think that the boy's name is Freddie and Bianca is turning into Eliza. <laughs> um. <laughs> to me, the boy was like floating along. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Just hearts. Walking on yep, the moon. Yep, yep. The police. Yeah. That's the and so I've got uh, several, uh, you know, early 20s, oh, late yeah. teens you have the, around the, me. That's like the, a... the studliest of muffins have been provided. And Bianca is oblivious. You asked for a sort of okay. young, and, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, young, curious, intelligent. Yep. Yep. I'm hoping I've got some of both genders. Yep. Um, right eyed and bushy tailed, as the saying goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and and has anyone managed to produce posters in the meantime? Uh, I mean, my mother uh, did talk about posters. As, as, as you, you mentioned that, you look back <laughs> and the first samples are being shown to grandma through the window for her approval. Uh, she's like, suggested a couple changes, so it'll be a bit, but yeah, it's it'll be a bit. Okay, yeah. so so we're gonna we're gonna go over to the Plaza del Sol and we're gonna find some likely places that that for for placing the grandmother's posters for a festival that's coming up soon. I, ga I gather. Looking for victims. <laughs> I mean, what? Yes. Oh, a party, well, a party uh, so we can come back. Yes, of course. And, and there's going to be things to do. That there will be all sorts of things to do here, and people to talk to and and interact with. And I, who I, I mean, want to everyone talk to. who's here will be there. So I'm sure your <laughs> oh. young man. What's your young man's name? What? <laughs> I'm sure your young man will be here. Yes. And you realize she doesn't know his name. She never asked. I do. I wrote well, it down, but I decided this is funnier if she forgot to ask. What's in a name? You know. I'll find. I'll find out at the at the party. Do we have exactly? To, do we have to bring? And she looks up the alley. Them, and she's referring to the people from at the Plaza del Sol. At the Plaza del Sol, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking. So I've got the. These are some of my new friends here too. Hi. And you know, the same might, sort of high as you got Terrence. Uh, yeah. Just a we might find out. You know, we might find out there might you were there and you're a real person. There might be a few other real people there too, right? Probably not. Let's go find out. But let's go. Oh find come out. on, let's go find out. Let Let's go find out if there are any real people at the Plaza del Sol. And then, right? Are we up for? Are we up for this? Looking for real people, and I'm looking for confirmation. Terrence, maybe. Terrence is like real, real people. Yeah, yeah, real people. But then the three of you turn away and start walking down the alley. The camera swoops down behind you to give you that sort of low angle shot, and we fade to black as we listen to Bianca just go on and on and on and on about this amazing boy and how he's just they share everything in common even though she doesn't know his name yet and that's where we fade to black on the a million miles an hour yeah <laughs> oh wow thank you thank you thank you both so much we went down near the whole two hours which surprises me but i'm happy because we filled it ah yeah. but i'm not this is good because i'm we, tired i swear it's all, it's all good. We're going to get you out of here in just a few minutes. Uh, roughly speaking, we have Sid back to, because you guys, uh, the, the first two parties were going to sort of, you were there. Uh, they were very formal. You weren't really allowed up near the thinging, so that's not going to matter. So we've got Sid basically back to that party. We've got a little bit and left. Yep. I can easily tell <coughs> you, um, Allegra's going to keep 
coming yeah. here until oh, yeah. she's got this all well established. So we can easily absorb any Another, amount of only, time yeah, in her coming. So, yeah. yeah. So it's really easy to absorb more time in here and she gets to know yeah. more people and, and, and things we'll like get, that. So uh, at any point she can be up in the timeline with yeah, Felicity. Absolutely. So we're, we're basically caught up uh, with one exception and we'll figure something out. So, uh -huh. but with that, the thank you. Uh, first of all, amazing episode. Uh, you guys, it's it's fun. We've been doing this long enough now. I We start and everybody just falls into their characters. There's no sort of rustiness. There's no, I don't remember. Even after, it. it's been more than a month since yeah, I've played a life. Exactly. It doesn't matter. But it makes zero, takes zero seconds to fall back in. Same thing with Sid, although uh, Sid's been skating. Uh uh, Sid's been on roller skates on an ice rink since about week three of this, so I absolutely <laughs> love it. And now he's having—he's so out of his element. He's yeah. just like, um, you've okay, got, but now you've got all these theory. talented speakers around you. So yeah, Sid's gonna learn how to learn how to talk. Uh, but I I love both these characters. I love this whole game. It's developing exactly as I wanted it to. We're relatively close. Uh, my rough plan is this big party that's going to happen is the start of the avalanche. Right, That's where the people that you've won over start winning over people. And it turns into that uh, shampoo ad from the 80s where I told two friends and they told two friends and they told two friends. And <laughs> so after that point, that avalanche gets started. It's going to be quick. And we're going to roll on to the end of this, what was supposed to be a 12-week campaign. Uh, so, <laughs> but we're still far enough away from that that we don't have to worry about it. I just wanted to give you an idea where we're at. So, more walk of water for me. <laughs> uh, because it's time for the important bits, the thank yous. Thank you so much to Bison underscore Stonefist. Um, I know Sid... I, I got some behind-the-scenes information, so I know Sid now isn't who Sid was going to be when Sid started. Uh, and I absolutely love the the more of you that leeches into Sid, the more I like Sid. The, the incredibly competent human being who goes, I don't know what I'm doing, until people say, yes, you freaking do! Uh, that that I love that element of of Sid. He's got all the talent and none of the confidence, outside of his little steam works, right? Yeah. He doesn't realize Which we need that... to get him back to. We need to get him oh. back in his element here very shortly. Yeah. Yep. I got I got a plan. Uh, I, I I got an idea for a hobby <laughs> for Sid, <laughs> a steam based <laughs> hobby. But you said it over a month, Karis, uh, and. Yeah. I know it has not, not one second of that has been easy. So thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back. And and even more thank yous for waiting until you were ready before you came back. I appreciate mm -hmm. that so, so much. Uh, this, as much fun as this is, health first, life first, the game can wait. But it didn't have yeah. to wait tonight. Because we had two great players and we filled in two hours and we moved the story along and it was magnificent. So thank you to everybody that watched. Uh, we had a number of people in tonight. I uh, hope most of you are still there. The numbers say you are. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for everybody that's watching on the VOD. Yay, VOD. Uh, yeah. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you watched all the way to here, please hit the buttons because we're going to assume you like it. But the really important button is the one over there in the link. And if you're watching on YouTube, hopefully I remember to put it in the, the description below. Uh, it is the link to our uh, Discord channel. Because that's the community that makes all of this happen. That's the group of nice people. A whole group of nice people. Imagine that. It's weird. It's, it's, I know nobody believes it until they're here. But it is a whole group of nice people being nice and wonderful and friendly and social and supportive and helpful and inclusive. And I could not be prouder of the community itself. So thank you to everybody. Until next time, as always, please be nice to each other. Good night. Bye.